Hey guys, it's Jen from I Create Crafts. In today's video, I will be showing you step by step how to personalize these big beer mugs from the dollar store. These were quite fun and very easy to create. I also will show you how to easily glitter these girl mugs as well. I'll, I'll leave all of my supplies listed in the description box below. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up if you love this video. Now let's get started. <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm starting in Design Space and I'm going to be using this file. This guy needs a beer. So I bought big, huge mugs from the dollar store and I'm going to be putting this on them. So two things I want to do here. First, I want to resize this and then second, I want to make one that says this girl needs a beer. So I want it to look some, somewhat similar to this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is select this. I'm going to go up to the duplicate button and make another one so I'm not changing the first one. And then this one is a little bit tedious because this file is... Um, Put together pretty well so if you you can't do anything with it until you detach it here so I'm gonna push the detach button then you have to go in again and click the ungroup button and now it should take off so all these letters are individual so now I can go ahead and delete these and fill it in with girls so I'm gonna go ahead and grab all three of them and then delete then I'm gonna go over here to the text box and I'm gonna type in girl now, the tricky part is I want something that's sort of similar to this, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So I'm going to drag this and make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go up to the text box and I'm going to go up to the search fonts because I found something that was similar to it. So it's copper plate. So I'm just going to type that in and here it is here. So this kind of looks similar. I mean, it gives it a little bit of a different feeling because it is a girl and not a guy one. So I'm just going to enlarge this and place it where it's supposed to go. So it kind of looks like you want to get it under these little lines here. So I'm just going to take it and shrink it a little bit. You know, do it however you want to do it, however it looks good to you. Um, but I'm just going to do it about that size, I think. And I think it looks uh, pretty good in the center, so I'm not going to mess with it. So the next thing I want to do is actually select the word that I just did, and I'm going to attach it. And then if you like it the way it is, which I do, I'm not going to change anything on it. I'm going to select the whole thing and then I'm going to push the attach button and that'll just make sure everything is going to cut out just the way it is. So it looks just like this, but it says girl instead. So the last thing I want to do is change the size. So like I said, I have dollar store mugs, so I know my size is going to be roughly 4.5 by 4. So with it selected, I go up to the unlock box up here and I'm just going to type in 4.5 by whoops 4. So it's going to be this size for my particular mug. It might have to be different for yours, but I'm just using the larger mugs from the dollar store. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Select or select the unlock box and then change it to be 4.5 by 4. And now you can change it to be, you know, any color you want, any, you know, different size if you need to. I'm actually going to leave this one black and I'm going to change this one to like a pinkish color. I'm going to be doing several of these ones. So I'm going to do like a holographic one. I'm going to be doing, you know, a, a red one maybe and then maybe blue and black for this one. So I'm just going to switch the color here for the girl one. So there we go. So um, I, th that's it for me. This is all I have to do. Um, I don't think I said where I got this from. So I believe you can get this file on design space. So if I go over here to the side and I right click, I'll go on image info. I can show you again. So I right click image info and it says this guy needs a beer. If you type in this number, this should come up for you. So if you go to the image section right here and you type in this number, this should come up for you. I believe I got it on here. I don't think I got it anywhere else. So if you want that, you just have to type that number in. I'll leave it in the description below in case you didn't catch it. But this is all I'm going to do for these two. It's resized the way I want. It's two different colors. So I'm going to go ahead and push the make it button. So here's the first one and then here's the pink one. So I'm just going to show you really quick what it, which uh, setting I use all the time. I don't use a lot of Cricut brand. I just buy whatever is on sale on Amazon. I'll leave it in the description box below. I know for the girl ones, I'm going to be using holographic vinyl and I absolutely love the holographic vinyl. So in case you're interested in that, I'll leave that in the description below as well. But I'm just using regular uh, 651 for both of these for now and then I'm going to go back and change it. But 
for the most part I'm using just this stencil vinyl here but then when I go to cut out another one like this for the girl I'm going to be using the premium holographic uh, setting right here so for the first part I'm going to cut out two of these and then I'm going to go back and do another one with the premium vinyl um, so I will I will finish this up I will cut it out I'll weed it out and then I'll show you the next step of putting it onto your glass mug all right so I have my files cut out here is the girl one and then here is the guy one I already put this one on transfer tape I uh, kind of jumped the gun on this one but I will show you how to do this. I'm going to show you this one really quick too. So Emma had the thought of putting glitter on the bottom. And I really love that idea for the girl ones. Um, I did the glitter on the bottom. I do need another coat on there. But this is what it looks like. So in case you're interested in this, just stay tuned to the end. And I'll show you how to do this. But this one is just drying. So the next part you want to do is clean your mug really well with a cotton ball and some alcohol. I already did that. I just wanted to let it dry, but I wanted to show you that's very important to do is clean your project before you start working on it and make sure it dries. So the next part you want to do is figure out which hand you want to do it. So I know a lot of people that are right-handed. My daughter actually is left-handed. Um, so I'm actually going to work on this side here. So I'm just going to turn it this way and I'm going to put my file here. But before I do this, I always like to have like a line to see how high to put it up. So I found that an electrical tape here, this little piece of electrical tape is the perfect size down on here. So I'm going to show you really quick how I did this. So I just flip over my, my mug and then I take a dry erase marker because you can easily wipe this off and I just lay it flat on here, just like that. So then I just take it and I just turn my mug as, I, as I'm holding it here. I'm not moving this at all. It's gonna give me a straight edge on here. So here it is. I don't know if it shows up very well, but you got the line on there. So now I have something to judge on here where I should put the um, file. So now I can take my file that I already put the transfer tape over and line it up here really well. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it well. So. I'm just taking, and the other thing you have to think about is you have the line here where they um, put it together, so you kind of gauge where you want it, where the middle is on here. So I'm kind of going closer to the handle here, but now I'm just taking the file up at the top and lining it up straight with the line that I made, and that will ensure that my whole file is going to be straight. So once you've got it on, you just push it with your fingers just like that. See? So the line is up there, but I didn't go too high to the line where my file is on it. I just went just enough up to it. I don't know if that shows up, but when I pull the transfer tape up, it should pull most of that color up. Otherwise, if it doesn't, you can just take some uh, cotton ball with some uh, alcohol and pull it off. See, it's pulling it off already. So now you just pull back your transfer tape and your vinyl will stay behind. Oh my gosh, I love this. So now I still have a little bit of purple at the top. I'm just going to take a cotton ball with some alcohol on it and just lightly rub it off. That's why a dry erase marker works really well so it doesn't take any of your file off. But there's that one. Okay, so to do the glitter one, it's pretty much the same process. You want to make sure your mug is really clean. So instead of flipping it upside down and doing it, we're going to leave it upside right. But for the size of my glitter where I want it to go, like this one, I actually used uh, the piece of electric, the electrical tape and then also a cover to the glitter and that's the height that I got for this one here. So to do that, you're just working with upside right. So you're gonna go upside right, you're gonna take your dry erase marker and lay it on here really flat. Just like that. So now you have the line on here where you can take your electrical tape and put it all the way around for the next step if you want the glitter. So I'm just taking a really long piece. I'm gonna cut it off. Now I'm gonna flip it upside down and you're gonna work backwards so now maybe that's a better angle for you guys so you can see the line on here up here so you can see the line here so I'm working upside down now so now I'm gonna take my tape and I'm just gonna line it up with the bottom part of the line that I just made and then you just oops. then you just follow it around making sure your butt up to the line if you're not, you can just easily peel it off and then go back because you want this to be nice and straight. And then when you get to the edge here, the way I did it is I just put it here and then I just took another piece of electrical tape and you could buy this electrical tape at the dollar store. 
and then I just went over the top because I don't want to go onto the handle itself. Go over the top. You can do the handle if you want, but I'm just choosing not to because I think it'll be easier to not do the handle. So now you want to go back and you want to erase all of the mark that you just put here. And if you still have some on there afterwards or if it's under the tape, that's okay because you can always go later on with some um, with another cotton ball and get it off. But you want to also, when you're doing this, push on your tape really well so it doesn't, you know, so your Mod Podge that you use next isn't going to seep through. So there is that part. So, so the next part you're going to want to do is take some Mod Podge. And I just bought a little bottle of Mod Podge from the dollar store. Just a little guy. It goes a long way. And then I bought this glitter from... Um, Walmart, but they do actually sell a little bottles of glitter at the dollar store as well. So I have multiple colors here, um, but the first part you want to do is just take a foam brush. Again, dollar store. I buy a lot of stuff from the dollar store. Pretty much everything that I'm using except for the glitter came from the dollar store. So then you just want to take it and brush down, just down strokes. And you can go over your tape there. It's not going to hurt anything. And depending on if you want to do the bottom of your mug, you most certainly can. I choose not to. So I just go pretty much to the tip here of, sorry, I keep hitting my camera. I go to the tip here. So it has a nice clean edge. So I'm just going to do this all the way around. And make sure you have nice even strokes and that you don't have like a bunch in one spot like right here because that will show up later on and this is this is just your first coat you're going to be doing many more of these depending on how dark you want it to be so just have that in mind when you put your glitter on that you're going to do it more than once the next part i'm going to do is grab my glitter and put my glitter on so i'm actually going to use this gold color and then i have a piece of paper to catch all of my glitter that I'm going to be putting down so I'm not wasting anything. So then you just take your glitter and you just pour it on. And you're not wasting anything because it's all going to go right back in the jar. So just like this. And if you miss some spots that's okay because you're going to do this more than once anyway. But just like that. And then I just tap it to make sure the excess comes off. And then you can go around it one more time if you want kind of fill in the spots that you missed. But you're gonna go ahead and do the same process over again once it dries. So if you do miss any spots, you can definitely fill it in. So just like that, that is it. That's all you have to do. So before this dries, before your Mod Podge dries, you're gonna to wanna to take off your tape. And I know that sounds weird, but I've done this before, many different videos. And if you leave your tape on and that dries, you'll pull up all of your glitter and it will not have a nice clean edge to it. So I'm just going to take it and slowly peel back the tape. Just like that. So here it is. I really like how it looks. You can use whatever color you want. So here's the bottom. I still got to take the tag off, which I forgot. Um, but it's nice and even everywhere and then if you have a little bit of glitter I don't know if this shows up but you just take another foam brush that you have that you didn't use and you can go around it and just push it off so just like that okay so we're gonna let this dry I'm gonna put the glitter back into the container that's why that we have that's why we have this paper here so I'm not wasting any of this glitter and then just pour it right back in here and we're going to let this completely dry for about 10 minutes or so, and then I'll show you the next part. It's pretty much the same process, but it's just a little bit more care that you have to put into it. So I'll let this dry, and I'll come right back. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. I actually went and did this one for the second coat. Um, I really love how it turned out. It's a lot darker, um, so I'm going to let this one dry, and then there's still one more process to this, but I'm going to show you really quick how we do the second coat to this one. It's pretty much the same process. You're going to take your Mod Podge, and just go over what you just did. And it sounds kind of crazy, but it's not gonna pull any of your stuff up. So you're just gonna carefully go all the way to the rim where you started and then work your way down. But you wanna make sure you have enough Mod Podge on your foam brush. 
it's pretty much the same process. Now you gotta be careful here because you don't wanna go over your line that you work so hard on making it nice and neat. So you just wanna get as close as you can to the edge without going over. And then I like to just fan it all out after I'm done. But this is pretty much it. So again, you can do this, you don't have to do this. I just thought it was a great idea that Emma had. So you just take it and fan it out. And I'm not pushing hard on this at all. I'm just lightly pulling up as I go because I don't want to pull any of this glitter up that we just put on here. But the Mod Podge acts as a sealer and also as glue, so it shouldn't pull anything up. So I'm just going to go around the whole mug, taking care on the side where the handle is here. And if you, this is this time that if you miss anywhere, or if you had any mistakes, that you can clean it up easily now, just doing this. Well, so now the, again, the same process, you're just gonna take your glitter and put it over everywhere where you just did it. So I let this finish drying for about 20 minutes now and it's completely on here. It looks really amazing. The last part you wanna do is just go over it with Mod Podge. And this is just the sealing process, so it's the same thing that you just did. You just gotta go around the edges really careful. You can do two or three more coats, whatever you want. I just did two coats on this. But this is, this is the last part that you have to do, is just make sure you go around. And this is the important part where you don't have lines or big splotches of your Mod Podge on here. And you wanna make sure you get down to the end here as well. Because you don't want somebody touching it and then it falls off. So I'm just carefully doing the top part first and then I'll do the bottom part next. And then kind of go around the whole thing. But if you're missing any spots or anything, now is the time to do it. But otherwise, this is going to seal it all in. So I'm just going to finish this up and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm all done with all of them. I was actually doing another white one in between. So once this all dries and I'm finished with this, I'll show you what they all look like. I love how these turned out. I created many more since I finished this video. I hope you learned something new and will create your own big beer mug glasses. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Happy crafting everyone!